So as a lot of my subscribers already know, I really like to take a look at some of the really minute details of the costumes and behind the scenes work and kind of analyze them. And I recently made a two part video on the Stormtrooper helmets and some of the inconsistencies between the movies and how they've changed and evolved over the years and how Disney's really made them much better than they actually were. And this video is gonna be no different, but this time I'm gonna be talking about probably my favorite Star Wars designs and costumes in the universe, and that would be Mandalorian armor. Ever since I was a little kid, Boba Fett and his whole look, and even Jango Fett, especially Jango Fett, his whole look was just so cool to me. They were some of the coolest designs and armor and helmet in the Star Wars universe. And so when I found out they were making the Mandalorian, I was so stoked to see brand new Mandalorian armor and designs in live action. But one thing that surprised me in the show is that instead of just using the original chest plate that we see Boba Fett wearing, Jango Fett wearing, and pretty much every single uh, Mandalorian in the Clone Wars and in Rebels, they went with a brand new chest plate design that's all one piece. The traditional Mandalorian chest plate design is this four piece chest plate that contains the iron or Beskar heart there in the middle, uh, two chest plates, and then a plate across the stomach. And this whole one piece design is worn by the Mandalorian at the very beginning of the show before he gets his full Beskar brand new armor. And this chest plate is used for every single other Mandalorian besides some of the more main and named characters. All of the Mandalorians who are part of that original covert on Navarro all have that uh, one piece Mandalorian chest plate. In season two, Axe Woves, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, uh, has that chest plate. Even during the flashbacks where we see Death Watch rescuing the Mandalorian as a little boy, they have that uh, one chest plate, which is completely different from every single other depiction where they have the traditional Boba Fett style uh, armor. And it kind of makes you wonder, why is this? Well, it's probably because leading up to this show, we really hadn't gotten a brand new official set of Mandalorian armor since Attack of the Clones, literally 17 years before the first season released. And because they went with this all new design, it was probably easier and more cost effective for them to just create this uh, one type of uh, chest plate and then use it for all the Mandalorians. In the Mandalorian, we see that Mandalorians are not what they used to be. They've been forced to almost scrounge for different pieces of Mandalorian armor, some of which aren't even made of Beskar, and wear those due to a lack of resources. And because of that, their designs are very mismatched. It looks like they've been pieced together with whatever they could find. It would make perfect sense to see maybe a few of those traditional chest plates, since that seems to be the most common uh, form of Mandalorian armor, because up until this point, that is probably 90% of every single design for a Mandalorian so far. So is it kind of lazy for Disney to just use the uh, one single chest plate? Maybe. You could also explain it as the armor probably only had the schematics for this one uh, chest plate design. And since she's probably the one repairing and creating all the armor for this uh, tribe of Mandalorians, it would make sense that they would all use a similar design. But later on, we do see the return of Boba Fett in season two. And we get a whole lot of him in the book of Boba Fett, of course. This really forced the costume makers to create that classic chest plate because that's what Boba Fett wears. And by doing this, it opened them up to the possibilities of including this chest plate in a lot of the new Mandalorian armor in the Mandalorian going forward. And as we've seen for the trailer of season three, we're gonna be seeing a ton more Mandalorians in the show, which I'm super excited for. And one thing I never actually mentioned or even noticed when making my Mandalorian season three trailer breakdown and something you guys pointed out to me is that we do finally see this classic Mandalorian chest plate design reincorporated into live action Star Wars and being used by uh, characters who aren't just Boba Fett. To me, by including this classic chest plate, it really just adds more to the whole idea that these Mandalorians are really scrounging around trying to find different pieces of armor. They're using all different designs, I love that we were getting variety in Mandalorian designs rather than one single specific design. To me, this makes the universe feel larger and more lived in. And I can't wait for this show to officially come out and for us to see all the new designs and costumes that the team has come up with. It looks like we're gonna be seeing different factions, which is probably an in-universe reason as to why we're seeing uh, these chest plates used because we're no longer dealing with 
the Mandalorians that uh, were part of that initial covert with the armor and Paz Vizsla. We might be seeing different groups with different beliefs and therefore different styles and paint schemes. One more thing I did want to mention that I've seen a lot of people talking about online is the fact that in one of the main shots that we get of Mando and some other Mandalorians, the rangefinder antenna sort of thing on the helmet is bent. Uh, this is something I kind of noticed at first and it doesn't bother me too much because, well, I don't want to judge it till we've actually seen the show and it's come out because there might be a reason for it. Again, we're just looking at a trailer. Maybe this is the aftermath of a battle and some of their armor got a little damaged. Or you could say all these pieces were again found so they might not be in perfect condition. But if there's no reason for this, then it's probably going to annoy me and a lot of other people as well. So guys, what do you think of all the variety of designs that we're getting in this show? Do you think it was lazy for them not to incorporate this original chess piece in the first season of The Mandalorian? Or do you think it's just another part of world building? And are you excited to see brand new Mandos in The Mandalorian Season 3? I love hearing what you guys have to say, so please comment and let me know your opinion down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like. It's a little bit shorter of a video, and I've got plenty of more costume-related behind-the-scenes videos and some other stuff in the works. So if you enjoy videos like this or my previous two Stormtrooper videos, please be sure to subscribe. It means so much to me. And again, at the time of recording this video, I am so close to a thousand. So I'd really appreciate your support if you subscribe. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.